Final Fantasy was the series that made me want to step into voice acting in my younger years. When Final Fantasy X came out and it was the first voiced JRPG, that moment was like, ah, that's what I want to do. He always had faith in you, that when the time came, you would ascend for the sake of your people. For Kor, being the mentor and the teacher to them was a really, really wonderful and new experience of a character archetype for me. And so it was really fun to kind of take on that position, to show up when it was necessary, to knock some heads and get them to think straight. He definitely has that kind of old soldier experience in his lifetime, and so we wanted to make sure that we got a depth and gravitas over the rest of the player party, which are generally younger, more youthful and, and energetic. The boats bring you here. They'll not take you full. When the auditions came through, I almost didn't audition for this character. There were a lot of older characters and deeper voice characters, which I normally gravitate towards. And I looked at Art and I'm like, oh, I get this guy, but ah, they won't use me for this one. And I did one take because I went, he's a lot of fun. The differences between Gladio and myself are vast. Gladio is outgoing and has muscles and hair, and I'm not like that. Voicing Noctis was definitely a journey. He's someone who tries very hard to be cool, but doesn't really know how to go about doing it. Everything he says has just a little bit of weight to it. He doesn't know how to just sort of like throw things away and go with the flow. He's kind of a nervous young man who tries to hide it, but he's not always successful in doing that. Preparing for voicing the character, a lot of singing in the car on the way into the studio. And the other excellent thing to remember, green apples. Green apples stops clicking sounds in the mouth as you're speaking into the mic. As with every voice character, I will do a warm up every day and get ready for that. But with her also, there's the body language of her because she is so wonderful and her posture is so good. I would think almost of a ballerina. And because she moves so slowly, it kind of helps with how her voice would be held so deep within the diaphragm. Preparation for video games is a little different than, say, stage or TV or other kinds of acting. It's something that actually happens very quickly. A lot of times, because there's so much secrecy about the project, the role, we don't see it until we actually show up in the booth, and so we don't have a lot of time like you might in other media. It's kind of like the same as sight reading for musicians. You show up and you have to see it. When you're playing a character that's unlike yourself, you really have to think about what the character looks like. You go through this process of, well, let's try, what, is it a full-on British accent? Is it mid-Atlantic? And then how old is the character? That's the age, that's the posture, and that, that can inflect. Preparing to voice Arden, he's got a higher voice than I normally do, because I'll do a lot of deeper voice characters. and creep! Your voices. Roar! That's not Arden. He's just got a very light, mellifluous voice. The director, Keith Farley, did a fantastic job of making sure that every time we talked, it sounded natural. I think the most important part was trusting in our directors and producers that once we got in there after the first few sessions and really found the voice, figured out who the character was, uh, allowing them to sort of guide us along the path of the game. It became easier and easier to step into that character's shoes every time we got in the studio. It's a collaborative effort and it helps in that preparation for their role. We had quite a lot of action sequences towards the end. That was really fun. Some of the action you would never get to do in real life. So this, you really get to just embody it and imagine it and it's so creative. You really get to just let go and be totally nuts in the studio. There's so many incredible quotable lines from Final Fantasy XV, but without giving any away, I think my recurring most fun one is just variations of Noct and his name. Noct. 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 Oh, Noct. <laughs> There's some wacky stuff that we did when the guys were running around where Prompto says something like, Hey, Noct, how often do you go fishing? And Noct goes, Eridae. And that was how it was written in the script, E-R-R-Y-D-A-Y. We were like, are we really going to make this that contemporary? And we'll see if it's in the game. We worked on this game for roughly two years. It was only after a year of working on it that I started to meet the other people involved. Towards the end of recording, we finally got to see each other every single day. We were all going to the same location at one time. So I was always running into my castmates, and that was a lot of fun. We're storytellers. 
so it naturally becomes fun and there's repartee and there's banter. We became such a tight unit in the booth. I'm, I just feel really grateful to have been involved in this project. There's incredible detail in the characters and the voices and, and how they're rendered. The whole world is so incredibly vast that you have ample opportunity to draw on all your life's experiences and it definitely called for that. We had so much fun recording this and I really think that that's going to come through in the game. The experience of recording Final Fantasy XV was probably the best video game I've ever worked on.